With Echo's Act 2, we got five new artifact perks to take advantage of, and I wanted to hop back on the Warlock and use a build that I really enjoy using on the Solar Subclass and apply it to Prismatic, which is going to be the Dawn Chorus, pairing that with the Solar Fulmination artifact perk. Let's not waste any time and dive right into it. So if you don't know what this exotic helmet does with its perk, Rites of Ember, your Daybreak projectiles deal more damage and Scorch targets on impact. We're going to be kind of avoiding that since we're going to be using Prismatic, but your Scorch is improved and you gain a small amount of melee energy when your Scorch damages a target. So essentially, if you're using abilities that can Scorch targets on top of a weapon that could come with a perk like Incandescent so you can Scorch targets with weapons, you can get your melee back pretty quickly. Now, going over the subclass, I've done plenty of Dawn Course builds in the past with the Solar subclass. So if you want to check those out, definitely go for it because to be honest, there really isn't much to change with those builds in particular, but I just want to take heavy advantage of Prismatic this season with the artifact perks. So going over our abilities, first up, I'm using Phoenix Dive as the class ability. For movement, I like Burst Glide, but you can use what you like. For the melee, we're going with Incinerator Snap so we can scorch targets and get very easy ignitions. And then for the grenade, I'm going with the Cold Snap Grenade, and there's going to be a reason for that. For aspects, the big one is Feed the Void. So defeat a target with any ability to activate Devour, and your Devour effects are improved. Essentially, with Devour, once you get it procced, every kill that you get is going to bump you back up to full health and give you grenade energy. So this one is going to be very important. For your second aspect, I really like the Hellion. So activate your class ability to summon the Solar Mortar that lobs flaming projectiles at distant targets. Targets damaged by the Mortar are Scorched. So this is going to be another way that we can Scorch targets and proc devour with Hellion. Out of all the fragments, these are the five that I like using. Number one being Facet of Sacrifice. So while you have any Arc, Solar, or Void buff, your ability final blows will give you bonus Darkness Transcendence Energy. It's a plus 10 to Discipline. If you didn't want to use this, Facet of Balance is pretty good. So rapidly defeating targets with Light Damage grants melee energy, and rapidly defeating targets with Darkness Damage grants grenade energy. It's good for energy regen overall. Or you could do something like Facet of Courage. So your Arc, Solar, and Void abilities deal increased damage to targets afflicted by Darkness debuffs. That's a plus 10 to Discipline with a, you know, Solar Melee and a stasis grenade, that's a good combo for Facet of Courage. For the rest of the fragments, Facet of Hope is a big one. So while you have any elemental buff, your class ability regenerates more quickly, which means we can have more Phoenix dives for cure and have more uptime on the Hellion. Next is Facet of Ruin. Increase the size and damage of the burst when you shatter a stasis crystal or a frozen target and increase the area of effect of solar ignitions. And since we're gonna be igniting targets and freezing them, we might as well have that increased AOE for better ag clear. Next, faster protection. While surrounded by combatants, you are more resistant to incoming damage. While transcendent, the effect is increased. That's a plus 10 to strength. And then lastly, facet of purpose. So when you pick up an orb of power, it's going to give you a buff based on the super we're using. And in this case, Song of Flame is easily one of the best supers to use on here. It's great for crowd control. You can survive pretty much everything, no matter what activity you're doing. And with Facet of Purpose, we will have restoration. So whenever we pick up Orbs of Power, we will have that continued health back. If you didn't want to use Song of Flame, I would recommend Needle Storm. So when you pick up that Orb of Power, you can have Woven Mail. For your artifact perks, in the first column for Weapon Champion mods, you can use what you like. The second column is focused on Origin Trait perk bonuses and you know, mod reduction cost for elemental charge and scavenger mods. So in this case, I'm going to be using overcharged armory and also winning hand since I am going to be using a pale heart weapon. In the third column, I have elemental siphon. So rapid final blows with a kinetic weapon or a weapon matching your equipped super will create an elemental pickup that matches your equipped super. In this case, we have a solar super with a solar weapon. We can make a fire sprite, which when we pick up will give us grenade energy. Next is creeping chill. Stasis weapon final blows against slowed or frozen targets release a burst that slows again this can be really good when paired up with the cold snap grenade and a stasis weapon which i will be using for this build in the fourth and fifth columns i have counter energy so when you are a member of your fire team stuns a champion you gain energy for your least charge ability next with radiant orbs while we have that prismax subclass equip pick up an orb of power is going to make us radiant which is a light buff a damage bump and also can allow us to pop those anti-barrier champion shields and then solar fulmination this is the big one for this. this is the whole reason i'm even making this build so your ignitions do increase damage in an increased radiance. So not only do you get a damage bump, but you get an AOE bump as well, which is pretty good. And then I'm also using Shield Crush here. So while you have Woven Mail, Frost Armor, or a Void Overshield, your melee recharges faster and deals increased damage. And while you're Amplified or Radiant, your grenade recharges faster and deals increased damage. Next with Transference, you gain increased grenade and melee damage while Transcendent. Weapon Final Blows while Transcendent refund light and dark energy after Transcendence ends. Since we hinted at some weapons on the artifact, let's talk about what I'm using. So in the Kinetic slot, I personally like the Bold Endings Hand Cannon. Again, this is the new craftable hand cannon from the pale heart with the final shape i am have enhanced headstone and dragonfly so not only do i get the crystal it also does an explosion there as well plus i have dealer's choice as the origin trait which means i can take advantage of winning hand and 
with it, you know, creating the stasis crystal and whatnot, I could take advantage of creeping chill as well, which is going to be pretty solid. Plus, I could take advantage of Facet Ruin with just this hand cannon. So this thing is fantastic. Any weapon with headstone is going to be pretty good, though. Just keep that in mind. If you want to do the special weapon route, any fusion that could come with the perk chill clip is fantastic. Riptide's a very easy one to get your hands on if you have some Crucible engrams lying around or if you want to play Crucible, definitely go for it. You can craft the Deliverance Fusion if you'd like to do that as well. For your energy weapon, I do recommend a solar weapon that can come with the perk Incandescent, specifically if you can get your hands on the Aberrant Action, which is the new craftable sidearm with Act 2 with the Echoes episode. I already have Heal Clip and Incandescent enhanced on this thing. I love it a lot. Plus, with Radial Area Transponder, I can take advantage of the Overcharged Armory or even Logic Reductor if I'd like on the artifact. But I really like this thing. It can handle Unstoppable Champions as well with it being a sidearm. It's fantastic for crowd control. Plus, the Scorch from, you know, Incandescent can give me my melee back fast. But if you don't have this thing yet, honestly, any weapon that can come with Incandescent is going to be perfectly fine. You have Callus Mini Tool. You have the new No Hesitation, so you can heal your teammates if you'd like to do that as well. Honestly, any weapon that can come with Incandescent, I just personally like having my primary as the kinetic and then being able to use the sidearm because I really like it a lot. Lastly, for your heavy weapon, Dragon's Breath is easily going to be your best bet with this build. With the amount of Scorch and whatnot you're going to be doing, you can pretty much have this thing be reloaded extremely quickly with all the ignitions you're going to be doing. This thing is great for boss DPS, it's good for clearing out adds. Dragon's Breath is just a certified classic. It literally cooked during Season of the Lost and everyone thought it was going to be bad. This rocket launcher is fantastic with this build to say the least. Now another weapon option you can do with this build that I find really cool is with the solar sniper bonuses on the artifact, it pairs extremely well with Don Course, especially with the improved Scorch giving you faster ignitions. So if you're someone who likes using Still Hunt, for example, this thing is great no matter what class you're using it on. Yes, it did get nerfed on Celestial Nighthawk, but we're on Warlock right now. So this thing can still perform extremely well with precision damage. I do have an Uzume RR4 Adept with four times a charm and precision instrument. I really like this thing, especially if I decide I want to use Whisper of the Worm. Again, it's a solar sniper. This thing just absolutely cooks targets as we know. And with those solar snipers, these bottom three artifact perks are extremely good for those. First up being incinerary rifle round. So solar sniper rifle precision hits will scorch targets. Now this stacks on scorch. So this means you can eventually cause ignition with just your sniper. And with solar fulmination, your ignitions do increase damage and increase radius. And with sniper's meditation, sniper rifle hits grant a stacking sniper rifle damage, stability, and reload bonuses for a short time. Heavy ammo sniper hits count as more than one. So with all of these, you can do even more damage with all the snipers that I just mentioned with this build in particular. Before diving into armor mods, let's talk about what stats to look for. First up being resilience. We talk about this every video. Try to have tier 10, 100 resilience. It's going to give you a 30% damage reduction, which we definitely want to take advantage of. After that, I would focus on strength. Strength is tied to how fast we get the melee back. And obviously we want to, you know, use our incinerary snap as much as possible. You don't really need to focus on discipline since we will have devour proc after an ability kill. So you could focus on something like recovery, which is also tied to our class ability, which means you can use your Phoenix Dive more often to have Hellion up more often, or you could focus on Intellect to get your Super back faster, but the main ones are Resilience and Strength. On the helmet, I'm using Harmonic Siphon, which translates to Solar Siphon, so those Rapid Solar Weapon Final Blows will create an Orb of Power, and I'm using Double Hands On, so I gain bonus Super Energy on melee kills. I will switch out one of these for Special Ammo or Heavy Ammo Finder, depending on what activity I'm doing. On the Gauntlets here, I'm using Double Momentum Transfer, so when I cause damage with my grenade, it reduces my melee cooldown, and with the Cold Snap, we can get it back pretty quickly with Devour, so having the melee back is definitely going to be a a big priority. I'm also using Stasis Loader, so I have that increased reload speed for the hand cannon, but you can switch this out for something like Heavy Handed, or you could put on another momentum transfer. On the chest piece, I'm using Harmonic Reserves, which translates to Solar Reserves, so I can have that increased ammo for my solar weapons, aka the Aberrant Action and Dragon's Breath. And then for resistance mods, again, you can use what you like depending on what activity you're doing. On the boots, I do like using Invigoration, so when I pick up an Orb of Power, it gives me my melee back. And since we have Devour and a way to get Restoration with this build, I don't find it extremely necessary to use Recuperation, but for tougher activities, Recuperation is definitely a good option, so you get health back each time you pick up an Orb of Power. And then I do like using Solar Weapon Surge, so your Solar Weapons gain a small bonus to damage while you have any Armor Charge, your Armor Charge now decays over time. Essentially, when you collect an Orb of Power, you'll gain an Armor Charge. In this case, we can have a maximum of three, and with any of these blue mods, it puts a 10 second timer on an Armor Charge, so with three Armor Charges, we can have 30 seconds of bonus weapon damage. And lastly on the class item, I do like time dilation. So your decaying armor charge has a longer duration. So that 10 seconds that I mentioned actually gets bumped up to 15 seconds so I can have 
45 seconds of bonus weapon damage at max armor charges. Then I'm using double outreach, so when I use my class ability, it reduces my melee cooldown. For my final thoughts, is this the best build in the game? I don't think so. Is it a good build? Absolutely. I can take out pretty much every enemy type, take out every champion type. I can wipe out rooms of adds, get my abilities back extremely quickly, and have options for DPS when it comes to weapons. I can use Song of Flame to take out, you know, bosses, help out my teammates. Is it GM worthy? 50-50, depending on your weapon combination. Obviously, Getaway Artist and Matai Doxy are extremely good ones <laughs> right now, and there's really no passing those two up at the moment. But having a Warlock be able to have really good ad clear on top of DPS options, especially in the sniper department for precision hits, especially something like the Witness, I think this is a good option considering the amount of ignitions you can cause with just hitting precision hits. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is my Don Chorus Prismatic Warlock build. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm actually going to put the dim link for this build in the description. So if you want to copy everything that I'm using, down to the subclass, the armor mods, the weapons, even the drip if you'd like, I will be including ornaments and shaders for the build so you can copy all that. And again, go test it out for yourself. Come back to this video and let me know if there's something you like using. Like I said, there are plenty of things you can substitute in for this build to make it extremely good and viable, especially in the precision weapon damage department. In any event, if you enjoyed watching, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on that bell next to notifications so you don't miss out on any other final shape builds I'm going to be dropping here on the channel. If you didn't know, we live stream here on YouTube and then also over on Twitch. Again, there's going to be the Salvation's Edge Raid. There's going to be the new activity to get the exotic class items, the co-op mode. There's going to be plenty of stuff to do. So if you want to hop in for any of that, again, hop in the chat. And then also, if you want to be proactive, join my Discord. Again, people are going to be looking to play activities together. So hop on in. We're also talking about anime, tech, and plenty of other games as well. Lastly, if you want to help support the channel even more so I can continue making this content for you guys, you can always look into becoming a member. If you don't know what a membership is, it's essentially like a Twitch subscription. Again, you're going to get access to the emotes, the monthly badges, and the big thing, which is getting early access to all of my videos. So if you want to look into becoming a member, all you have to do is press the join button, next subscribe, and that'll give you a rundown with all the details you need. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been your boy. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!